from Mexico against Juan Manuel Lopez, an extremely swick, slick, quick, fellow southpaw boxer from Puerto Rico. For more on that, let's turn to our world championship boxing expert, the legendary trainer and manager, Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel, um, a lot of people have fallen in love with Ponce de Leon, who has a great story and a long, strong body. But Larry Merchant is always fond of saying that Puerto Rican boxers learn skills at an earlier age than in most other cultures in the sport. And Lopez appears to be a great example of that. Does he have the kind of stuff necessary to pull off the upset here tonight? The answer to that, Jim, is yes. He has the ability to do that. And basically, based on what you said, he has boxing skill. In addition to he has a good punch like Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon is very dangerous because he punches extremely hard and he throws a lot of punches. And you can see his punches coming, but he throws so many of them that sooner or later he starts connecting. But tonight, I think he's going to have a problem because I think Lopez has a lot of skill, a little better movement, a little sharper, crisper punches, so he has a very good chance of beating Ponce de Leon tonight. With a plan to step inside of Ponce de Leon's longer arms and land that quick right hook. Yes, because Ponce de Leon throws long punches, and you can see them coming. All right, let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for Ponce de Leon against Lopez. Both of them fascinating and interesting young men. You see the two-year age, actually three-year age difference in favor of the Puerto Rican fighter. Also a two-inch height advantage for Lopez. Arm length advantage of one inch measured from the armpit to the end of the fist for De Leon. Interesting, isn't it? The fighter who's two inches shorter has the longer arms. They both weighed in a pound under the 122-pound weight limit. De Leon has gone up to 131 overnight. Lopez unofficially to 129. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Daniel Ponce de Leon, one Manuel Lopez fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria the judges will use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. Thank you, Harold. Here comes Juan Manuel Lopez. He hails from the same town in Puerto Rico as young Miguel Cotto, Aguas, Puerto Rico. Says that he's actually closer friends with Felix Trinidad than he is with Cotto. And like Cotto, Emmanuel, he was a father at a very early age. He is at 24, married to a slightly older woman and his fathering five children, three stepchildren, two of his own. That seemed to bring an enormous maturity to Cotto at an early age, and perhaps it's done the same thing for Lopez. Yes, you know, we've been seeing fighting that out a lot with a lot of the Latin fighters, particularly the Mexicans and the Puerto Ricans right there. They seem to be very comfortable with marriage and very much family oriented as compared to a lot of the other ethnic guys that we have boxing on these shows. An interesting meeting yesterday with Lopez Max. Fast-talking, confident young man. Seems to have a clear plan in his head for what he needs to do to win tonight. Charismatic. He's not going to just simply trade punch for punch with De Leon, with Ponce De Leon. It's not a good idea. He is the sharper boxer. And I think those who think that Ponce De Leon will win figure he's more battle-tested in the professional ranks and maybe in a gut-check kind of fight, that'll carry the day. Jim, Lopez is good enough where it's possible it doesn't become a gut-check kind of fight. In Cotto's rise to superstardom, one nagging criticism has been that he's too taciturn, too serious, too within himself to really reach out to fans. If Puerto Ricans are looking for the next fighter who speaks their language in that way, here he is. And you can see immediately his determined communion with the audience, his desire to be a star. He can get there in a hurry with a few wins, most particularly if he can get it done tonight. So now Juan Manuel Lopez will wait in the ring. This is one of those matchups of which we've seen several in the last year and a half between a top-ranked promoted fighter, that being Lopez, and a golden boy promoted fighter, who will be the next picture you see, Daniel Ponce de Leon. This is one of the greatest personal stories to come along in boxing in recent years. Born into a poor family in the Taramur Indian tribe of Mexico. He originally lived in a tiny village at 8,000 feet altitude, where all of his four older siblings died of disease in infancy. His parents, determined to see one child make it through to life, moved from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain to find medical care. 
And the result is that not only has Ponce de Leon survived, but he has come on to become a boxing champion. He sees his life as a privilege, Emmanuel, and he prizes his status in the sport the same way. Yes, yeah, so he's one of the toughest guys that I've ever saw in boxing in a long time. You know, by the way, his manager is Oscar De La Hoya's father, Joel De La Hoya. But on the other hand, Max, he's been learning on the job, and there have been some serious rough spots in that learning process. Indeed, uh, his best win, you know, it's not like he hasn't been in against the top prospect before the Batista fight, and he scored a spectacular first round knockout, but class tends to tell over time, and if this goes rounds, the expectation is he will have to overcome the greater skill of Juan Manuel, Manuel Lopez. Our very dear friend Michael Buffer got married to his darling Christine on May 10. This is the first time we've had a chance to be with him since. So congratulations, Michael, as we throw it up to you for pre-fight introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, by way of Caesars Atlantic City, good evening and welcome to an evening of world-class professional boxing brought to you by Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated and sponsored by La Cerveza Mas Fina Corona Extra and Affliction. All bouts sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. This first contest presented in association with Golden Boy Promotions. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point system will be Lynn Carter, Joe Pasquale, and John Stewart. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action at the bell, Michael Ortega. And now, from Atlantic City's Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey, let's get this party started. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Super Bantamweight Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with gold, and officially weighing in at 121 pounds. This 2004 Olympian now has a professional record that's perfect, consisting of 21 bouts, 21 victories, including 19 KOs, Namazi Caballeros de Caguas, Puerto Rico, the undefeated. Number one ranked challenger in the world, Juan Manuel. Juan Manuel. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing black with gold. Official weight, 121 pounds also. Professional record, an outstanding one. 34 victories, including 30 knockouts. Only one defeat. Thomas de Caballeros de Cuauhtémoc, Chihuahua, Mexico. The reigning, defending, WBO Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Daniel Ponce de Leon. Let me clear everybody out. Good luck to both of you. Buena suerte a los dos. Toca la mano. Touch gloves. Another chapter in the long set, book, John. Jim, of uh, Mexican and Puerto Rican right. fighters. It's been a great rivalry. And uh, this looks like another great matchup. With 49 days to go until July 26. The, yeah, how's that for a matchup? The Super Bowl, at least of this moment, for Puerto Rican versus Mexican fighters when Miguel Cotto takes on Antonio Margarito. So round one begins, and Emmanuel, I don't think I've ever seen a stronger-looking 122-pound fighter physically mm -hmm. than Daniel Ponce de Leon. No, and he looks very strong and determined mentally also in this fight. He's punching a little shorter than he normally punches, and he's a lot more aggressive in the beginning with shorter punches. Great confidence for Ponce de Leon as he fires his straight left hand down the middle. 
against Juan Manuel Lopez. You know, obviously, when two southpaws line up against each other, they're facing what should be easier offensive punching angles than when they go against conventional fighters. But both of these guys told us yesterday they're more comfortable going against conventional fighters for the simple reason that, just like the guys who line up right-handed, they don't see as many southpaws as they do of the other kind. You know, southpaws really, as a rule, hate to fight another southpaw. You heard the crowd support for Lopez as they were introduced. Ponce de Leon, however, seems very comfortable in the first round and is letting his firepower go. And now Lopez begins to make his own mark with a straight left hand of his own. And remember, watch for those situations when Lopez is able to step inside of Ponce de Leon's long arms and land that quick right hook, which has been his knockout punch even more frequently than the left. Good jab by Lopez. And down goes Ponce de Leon. His legs are gone. And he's blinking his eyes, and there's a perfect example of Lopez's quicker, more skillful approach. Let's see if he can finish in round number one. This will be interesting because Ponce de Leon is not used to being on a defense. Ponce de Leon told us he's never been down before, nope. not in an amateur or professional fight. Nope. Lopez has got him going once again. And look at the confidence of Juan Manuel Lopez as he steps into the middle of Daniel Ponce de Leon's firepower, looking for the knockout. But 53 seconds yet to go. But he's perfect, hook. perfect hook. Shot Another shot. perfect hook. Another perfect hook. His punches are too short. Michael Ortega's got to make a decision now. Ponce de Leon doesn't have any legs. It's over. A tremendous first-round knockout performance for Juan Manuel Lopez. What a debut at the top of the sport. A star is born. Bingo. He this actually looked back on his heels in the first 30 seconds of the fight. He was taking his time, Lopez. Not getting caught with anything stupid early. Juan Manuel Lopez has for the last couple of years been considered the best prospect out of Puerto Rico. He's not a prospect anymore, Jim. What a great right hook, Emmanuel. Yeah, it's much shorter, accurate punches. Much, he looked very seasoned and patient for a young, inexperienced fighter. And Daniel Ponce de Leon wondering what hit him. As his career momentarily comes crashing down. Let's take a look at what happened. Good feint. That was the first hook that did the damage. Ponce de Leon not able to recover. Yeah, he got the, the right hook is really what it did to knock the skill knock down. It was just delayed action. Knockdown number two, Emmanuel. Right here, you see, that it's just a simple case of his punches being shorter and more accurate. And then the punches coming back from Ponce de Leon, who has to have more of a loop room. And as a result, Lopez's no punches are getting the end before. Another look at the second knockout. And in every one of these pictures, it's exactly what we set up for you, the notion of Lopez stepping inside and using that brilliant right hook to get it done. Yeah, he lands left hands, but it's really the power in the right hook that's the, the right difference. Hook. It is short, accurate punches. Lopez becomes a title holder in the 122-pound weight class and targets the Israel Vasquez's and Rafael Marquez's of the division. Let's go to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of Caesars Atlantic City here at the Boardwalk Hall, the fight comes to an end at two minutes, 25 seconds of round number one. The winner by TKO victory, still undefeated from Caguas, Puerto Rico, the new WBO Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Juan Manuel, Juan Manuel Well, I'm not really sure how big a town Caguas, Puerto Rico is, but it is now home to who of two of the hottest and most marketable stars in boxing, Miguel Cotto, you've got company.
as Juan Manuel Lopez moves toward the pinnacle, joining Cotto in the spotlight of boxing. Let's take a look at final CompuBox numbers for the two minutes and 30 seconds or so of this fight. Just total punches, and you can see the relatively high accuracy rate for Lopez. Most of De Leon's six connected punches came in the first 30 to 45 seconds of the fight, and from that point forward, it was all the Puerto Rican star unloading at close range, targeting De Leon with his brilliant right hook and putting him on his back. That's what fans like to see. Let's go to Max Kellerman in the ring with the winner. Juan Manuel, congratulations on a sensational knockout victory. A lot of people have fought Ponce de Leon. No one's ever did that to him. How'd you do it? Yo siempre he dicho que que yo soy mejor boxeador que él. Tengo mucha más habilidad. La pegada era más o menos igual. Era cuestión de de esperar el momento correcto y lo esperamos y gracias a Dios pues lo logramos. I've always said that I'm a much better fighter. We have equal power, but I'm a better ability. And it was just to wait for the opportunity, and that's when it came. He seemed to start fast, and you were defensive. What were you thinking at the opening bell? La pelea era con calma, round por round, round por round, a lo que le podían darle, 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 sabe, poder colocar mis manos. Pienso pensé que la pelea iba a durar mucho más, ya que era un pelea fuerte. Pero se tiró, lo pude agarrar con mi gancho de derecha, para el cual ellos supuestamente se prepararon, pero eso fue lo que le hizo daño. We were in for a long haul. It was round by round. That's what we prepared for. But that's how it came, and we were prepared. Supposedly they were prepared for my right hook, but apparently that wasn't the case. That's how we got it. When you knocked him down with the first right hook, he got up on shaky legs and you calmly approached him. What were you thinking after the knockdown? Hoy repito, él era un peleador fuerte, que al cual no nos podemos descuidar en ningún momento. Y yo le estaba dando, pero estaba de pie, estaba lanzando golpe fuerte. Había que no podíamos desesperar ni por eso fuimos con calma. Lo tenía, no era cuestión de tiempo. He's powerful and we had to be careful, but we knew it was just a matter of time. And he was powerful, so we had to be but it was just a matter of time. Okay, for the last couple of years, you've been considered the best Puerto Rican prospect. You're not a prospect anymore. Who are you looking at in the division? Vamos a descansar primero, claro está. Pero, por supuesto, me gustaría tal vez en algún momento estar unificando con algunos de los campeones. Tal vez Israel Vázquez es un buen candidato. De eso nos encargaremos de, de consultarlo con la compañía. We need to relax for the first uh, for the first part of it, relax, but obviously whatever the company decides, but Israel Vázquez will be a good way to unify the title. You feel you're ready for the very top of the division right now? Si con hoy no lo demostré, ¿qué tengo que hacer para demostrarlo? If I didn't demonstrate it today, what do I have to do to demonstrate it? I don't know. Congratulations, Juan Manuel. Muchas gracias y a toda mi gente de Puerto Rico, a mi familia, a los pavones, a todas mis tías y mi abuela, de verdad que sí, muchas gracias. Que nos esperen mañana, 11.50, América del Live en Puerto Rico. A mi gente latina, a mi gente de Puerto Rico, los quiero, los amo, se lo prometí. Juan Manuel, el nuevo I don't think there'll be too many complaints about his